Dave and Patricia, get us set up for the 2A final, guys. About as good as you can get. You have number one versus number two. Your undefeated state champion, defending state champion in Bloomington Central Catholic, Quincy Notre Dame, with just one loss. But boy, these teams were tested last night. They were really put under the microscope. We're going to be seeing two teams that are not only physically tough, but mentally tough as well. And if you win a, win a state championship, you've got to be mentally tough. Notre Dame got off to a rough start last night in its semifinal against Nashville. Shut out in that first quarter, 0 for 8 from the field, but came back with some tough defense to win the game. Bloomington Central Catholic won a two point game. Now, this is a team that is used to rolling over people. They had a one point victory earlier in the season, but other than that, their next closest victory was 12 points. So they had to show some mental toughness to win a tight ball game last night as well. In a weekend of rematches, this is the ultimate. Last year was Bloomington Central Catholic, a six point win over Quincy Notre Dame in a championship game. Notre Dame lost 70% of their scoring, yet they return Bloomington Central Catholic. They're back and they're ready to go back to back. Let's take a break and we'll get back here and we'll get this thing started. Your 2A title game coming up next. Where am I looking? And hey, welcome back here. Coach Kaufman uh, getting ready for a state championship game once again. You've been here before. We are. We're ready to play. Um, you know, it's been a long four months and this is what they wanted to achieve and here we are. All right. Best of luck, Coach. Thank you. All right. On to the PA announcer to get ready for the lineups. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the starting lineups for the Class 2A state championship game of the 2011 IHSA Girls State Basketball Tournament. First from Central Catholic, a senior, number 12, Allie Norton. From Quincy, Notre Dame, a junior, number two, Shannon Foley. For Central Catholic, a senior, number 20, yeah. Emily Violetto. For Notre Dame, a junior, number 14, Kate Gennenbacher. For Central Catholic, a senior, number 24, Lindsay Stopa. For Notre Dame, a sophomore, number 15, Cassidy Gingenbacher. For Central Catholic, a senior, number 31, Jess Reinhardt. For Notre Dame, a junior, number 21, Tori Kuhn. For Central Catholic, a sophomore, number 32, Danielle Davis. And for Notre Dame, a sophomore, number 22, Jordan Frericks. Central Catholic brings a 32-0 record into tonight's game. The Saints are coached by Debbie Kaufman in her 13th year with a record of 311 wins, 77 losses. Notre Dame brings a 30-1 record into the game. The Lady Raiders are coached by Eric Orne in his 11th season with a record of 269 wins and 72 losses. And now, ladies and gentlemen, before our soloist sings our national anthem, we ask you to please remember and honor the men and women of the United States Armed Forces serving throughout the world with this moment of silence. Thank you. And now we ask you to join our guest soloist, Hillary Jennings, a student at Effingham High School, in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that 
as the players and coaches wish each other good luck at half court, the IHSA reminds you that we expect and promote good sportsmanship from all athletes, coaches, students, parents, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants and officials in a positive manner. Remember to do what's right. Our officials for the Class 2A Championship, David Hasley, Chris Long, and Kevin Peters. Bloomington Central Catholic, their mission is quite simple. They want to go back to back. For Quincy Notre Dame, Eric Gordon, their head coach, his theme this year, go the distance, and he's with Matt Rodewald. Something that not many teams get to do, actually avenge the defeat from last year in a state championship game. What'd you tell them? Well, I tell them they're ready. Uh, they're gonna come out, we're gonna try to get out to a quick start, take it right at them. Right, thanks, coach. Michael Jordan once said about the Pistons, you gotta slay the dragon that tormented you. This is their chance. Here we go, number one versus number two, a rematch of last year's championship game won by Bloomington Central Catholic 64 to 58. Just like that Shannon Foley will pick it up for the travel in the first four seconds. Dave Bernhardt, Patricia Babcock McGraw and Matt Rodewald with you. Our pleasure to bring you this 2A championship game from Redbird Arena. You saved our monitors Dave. <laughs> that ball was coming bouncing right at us. <laughs> I do what I can. Yeah. yeah. A quick exchange of turnovers. As the Lady Raiders the ball. 30 wins, one loss. The one loss came in the last game of the regular season to Missouri Power Incarnate Word. Inside Brerich, she had a big game in a championship game last year. Brerich with 15 points last year in that loss. Also had 10 rebounds. Sophomore All-Stater. Here's another one handling the ball, Ellie Norton. I love the fact that Notre Dame is pressing Bloomington Central Catholic. You know what they say about a lot of teams that press, that they don't like to be pressed themselves. And here's our first look in the championship game of that vaunted 1-2-2 press. Notre Dame breaks it. Catch Great inside and a score by Kuhn. And you can tell that emotion already right out of the box. These players are pumped. We saw the double fist pump by Tori Kuhn. I like the fact that Notre Dame is going inside early. Both baskets by this Notre Dame team have pumped in the paint. Up strong by Tori Kuhn. Kuhn was scoreless in his semifinal win over Nashville. Nice. Offensive board and a score for Notre Dame. Jordan Frerick so long just able to reach up and get that with one hand. Well, Barrett Gorn went a quick start. That's about as quick as it gets, but you can count that basket from Lindsey Stoka. Nice take to the basket by Lindsey Stoka. Nice turnaround move there. Two defenders in her face gets knocked down. Good strength on that move. Stopa individually will cut that lead in half at 6-3. Cassie Gengenbacher for it with Notre Dame. This is Frerich. A couple of sophomores that started in this game last year as freshmen. Here's Shannon Foley. Boy, what a great tournament she has had. Two games back to back, super sectional, and she was clutch. She was money. She's the reason that Central Catholic's playing in his title game tonight. Be a walk on Coon. There's Debbie Kaufman in her 13th season, 311 wins. Her team has won 42 straight games. They had an undefeated season going a couple of years ago before being knocked out in the sectional. That was a game where the Lady Saints, the Saints were bothered by the flu. In fact, Kelly Norton did not play that game. She played the game and then ended up in the hospital after it with dehydration. There's Allie with the ball there getting trapped along baseline. You know, this game is a little bit of personal redemption for her. She had to sit that final minute of the uh, game last night against Bishop Mack. 
fouled out of the game. She was not happy about it. Her teammates were able to wrap up a close game, but man, she wanted to be on the floor. Yeah, in fact, her teammates helping her out. How about Caroline Holt, the replacement for her yeah. after the foul out. She hit the two, and in, in effect, game-winning free throws for the Saints. Yeah. Carolyn Holt said after the game, you know, I was nervous, but I knew I needed to do it for Allie and for the rest of my team. I wanted to step up for Allie sitting there on the bench. Fire in the championship game once again. Cassidy Gengenbacher. She had a clutch three. It was the shot of the night. Notre Dame. This was a team. Notre Dame fell behind 11 to nothing in the first minute of the second quarter. They battled back, battled back, and it was Gengenbacher's three in the fourth quarter that finally gave the Lady Raiders the lead. Averaging 14 and a half points per game. Gengenbacher is the top three-point shooter for Notre Dame. 33 pointers heading into the finals. Emily Violetto with it. Violetto does so many nice things for this team. They shot inside, kind of a wild one coming off the hands of Maggie Hayes. Kuhn, the catch inside, they are powering in. Tori Kuhn getting a lot of touches in tight for Notre Dame. This is Jess Reinhardt, All-Stater. It's a nice spin move inside. And we were harping on that, at least I was anyway, in the, in the last game, the third place game, about the teams needing to get the ball inside, being aggressive, going to the basket, making things happen, playing off that energy that you get when you take the ball to the basket. We have seen nothing but that out of these two teams. Nice aggressive moves to the basket, drawing fouls, getting high percentage shots, keeping that energy level high. I like the tempo, the pace of this game, and the way, the style that these two teams are playing with right now. Yes, Reinhardt with 19 points in the championship game last year against QND. It was Ellie Norton with 27 points in that title contest. So those two combining for 46 points in their junior years, and here they wrap up their career right where they were last year. Pressure broken, Gengenbacher. A kick there. Engenbacher may have been a little bit better off had she taken it all the way. Eric Orn, so thrilled to be back in this ball game. He felt a lot of people were looking at QND saying, well, you darn well better get back in that game. There'll be a foul on the floor while Kate Genenbacher was there. Genenbacher related somewhat, kind of, you know, in a way, to the Gengenbachers. They are distant, distant relatives, so distant, in fact, there was a dispute about six generations ago in those families. And the uh, one side said, you know what, we're gonna take a G out of our name because we're so upset with you. <laughs> As Tori Kuhn puts that one in. Oh, you gotta get back. Good hustle, good hustle by Kate Denimauer. However, Maggie Hayes powers it up and in. A backcourt foul by Molly McGraw. Good ball game here in our 2A championship. The pace is high, the fans are revved up. We're about the midway point of the first quarter. Stay right there, it's your 2A championship brought to you by Country Financial. Those folks have been ready for quite some time here tonight in Redbird Arena. They were jacking it up for the third place game and now it's their time and their team, the Lady Raiders from Notre Dame on top by two. And one thing we've seen Patricia here early, the quality of these teams and the intensity that they are bringing out here in the opening moments. A lot of emotion. Nobody home off that pass from Fredericks. You know, that's what Bloomington Central Catholic can do to you. They can make you rush. They can make you do things that you don't want to do. That's not a pass that Notre Dame wanted. Great play that time by Kate Genenbacher. Considered to be maybe the best athlete on this QND team. She just chased that ball down and knocked it off from Central Catholic.
into traffic. Somehow it gets through. Wow. And Tori Kuhn coming up big tonight. Tori Kuhn is hungry for that basketball. Did not play last season because of an ACL injury. You see her with the knee brace on. She's really coming out on fire tonight. She was 0 for 6 from the field last night in the semifinal. And she has it again. Oh, and another chance. She just wanted to pad her rebounding stats there a little bit. Tori Kuhn all <laughs> over this floor, and she's given her team a 13 to 7 lead. She was kind of putting her hand in front of her face like, oh, I'm so embarrassed I just missed that wide open layup. But hey, you know what? The plus side is you get another rebound in the stat column. Here she comes. Nope, sorry. Yes, 13-7, six point lead. This right back to herself. <laughs> Tori Kuhn here early, eight points, three rebounds, four of six from the floor. You know, that happens sometimes. Yeah, you're just too wide open. You overthink it. One thing I think Debbie Kaufman, when she called a timeout bringing her team over, I think she was a little disappointed in how they hustled back down yeah. the floor after that turnover. That's right. You can't quit. That's one thing that our coaches always told us when we were in high school is that you cannot assume that your teammate is going to make that wide open layup at the other end. You hustle after because in case she misses it, you get that rebound. you got to follow every single play. Don't ever give up on any play. There is Debbie Kaufman. A fantastic record she has had here in recent years, and she is so appreciative of what these seniors have done. Their record 117 and 6. They have been so successful. Their last loss came on January 28th. 42 straight wins. That's the 12th longest in state history. And a win here in this championship game would be. The sixth time that a team has gone back to back in Illinois girls basketball. Cassidy Foley now in the ball game, like 34, hounding Norton up top, the younger sister of Shannon Foley. Boy, Notre Dame is relentless defensively, and some extra contact on the floor going down hard. I'll take a look back at it. Good fight for the ball, though. Morgan Martin. Oh, that, that doesn't feel good. But I like that hustle, denying the passing and getting out in front of your offensive player. Nice defense by Morgan Martin. The backdoor cut by Bialetto. She'll get the bucket off the pass from Megan O'Donnell. She had some nice offensive plays last night against Bishop McNamara, mostly known for her defense, that long, Long arms, long legs, able to cover a lot of territory defensively, usually playing the other team's best offensive player. But last night she gave Bloomington Central Catholic quite a bit of offense with nine points, going to the basket hard again. Martin looking for Reinhardt, just Reinhardt, the Lewis University recruit will go to the line. Her pass came from future Truman State player, Ellie Norton. Just running hard at the free line. Reinhardt, a three-year All-State performer. 13 points last night. She averages 15.2. You can hear about a lot of these girls who have parents who have coached them all through school. Her dad, Greg, coached her and a lot of her teammates in junior high. She's got a lot of these girls have parents who know the game of basketball. They talk basketball. They teach their kids the proper fundamentals, the right way to play basketball. It's a common thread that you see in a lot of these top players. Parents very involved in their basketball careers. Gengenbacher will bat that off the leg of Violetto. 13-8 QND. Last year it was pretty early lead by Bloomington Central Catholic. Notre Dame coming up short in the end by six. Two state championships for QND. That was in the middle 80s. One wow. for... Central Catholic, and right now Notre Dame picking it apart. And that was a great pass, great bounce pass across the floor, looking for Jordan Ferris there. Good teams find each other. That was Cassidy Gangenbacher with that great bounce pass. I love the bounce pass. So 
so often you see players just trying to use the chest pass. Good bounce passes get around defensive players. And nothing coming easily here for Central Catholic. In and out for Danielle Davis. Three new players ready Central to check Catholic in for 20, QND. First Shouldn't say necessarily Kristen three Bauer. new players. Kristen Gengenbacher makes her first appearance. Also in the game is Gracie Barnes. Now, nothing unusual here. Shannon Foley, by the way, checks back in along with Tori Kuhn. This is exactly how Eric Warren likes to play it. He will play 10 players, and he gets them all in in the first quarter. Ferrix. Nicely done by Davis to present, prevent an easy one from Frerick. Notre Dame has been a deep team all season long. You mentioned how he likes to go deep into his bench early. That's going to help against a team like Bloomington Central Catholic. You're facing that press the entire game. That's taxing, physically taxing, plus you're on a long floor. Notre Dame's depth is going to help them in this game. Kuhn, yet another rebound. Look at the wow. strength of Tori Kuhn. How Tori determined Kuhn. is Tori Kuhn? She's getting her own putbacks, going after offensive rebounds, really barreling her way through the lane. Just showing that physical strength and determination. Been so impressed with her game so far. Ten points here in the opening quarter. Reinhardt has her shot partially blocked by Flores. Foley saw Barnes ahead, yeah. couldn't get it to her. Now Norton will look to settle things down instead of three. Norton will be competing. She won the 2A three-point country showdown. She'll be shooting for back-to-back -back titles, the overall queen of the hill, next weekend. But it's a nine-point lead here early for Quincy Notre Dame. Kristen Gingenbacher. Oh, you got to take that. When you're that wide open against Blues and Central Catholic, you've got to unload. Norton looks ahead. And a free throw line. Once again, we'll go Reinhardt. Well, you wonder the pace at which Notre Dame is playing. They are playing so fast, so hard on both the offensive and defensive ends. You wonder whether they will be able to sustain that. Well, in a state championship game, you better be able to sustain it. And uh, you're going to be able to sustain it with a lot of adrenaline, too. I mean, these girls are not thinking about tired legs right now. They are thinking about trophies. They are thinking about state titles, being number one. When you've got that on your mind, you're not thinking about how tired you are. You know, in fact, both coaches reacting to that very point, shuttling players in and out almost at every dead ball to keep the legs fresh. I think both coaches realize the pace that this right. game is being played at. Yep. And the players would never admit that. They would never admit to being tired in this game. They don't want to come off the floor. So the coach is doing a good job of managing that. Point of the press is still a 10 second call. There it is. First time tonight, the press has resulted in a 10 second call, a turnover. And with 119 to play in a first, the defending state champions down by seven. Catching traffic by Reinhardt. Yes. That was traffic. She was fronted. She had somebody behind her. Still able to catch that ball, keep it high, and get it right up. Gengenbacher can't dribble through. Numbers for the Saints. Norton deep. Bring it up. Wow. She is a clutch shooter from there. 79 three pointers heading into the finals. You, know, you talk about that three point contest. She hit 11 of 15 of her shots, all five of her shots on the last rack. Talk about ice water through the veins. Allie Norton, clutch shooter. She's pulled her team within two, and now they'll look to tie. Here's Caroline Holt. Holt goes strong and scoops it in. Wow. It's like smelling blood. You sense the momentum shifting in your favor, and you push it even more. 
Down by nine, the game is now tied. Allie Norton, she shoots the three-point contest, but not this far out. No, she's definitely showing her range, and boy, that's, that's tough. How do you guard a player who can hit it from that far out? And then, wow, nice drive to the basket there by Carolyn Holt. She had those big free throws last night against Bishop McNamara. The freshman is really stepping up and coming up with some key plays for Bloomington Central Catholic. Looking for Kuhn, they find her. Scope of the block. Norton checks the clock, it shows six, now five. Norton all the way. And we will end the first quarter exactly the way you would draw it up. The number one and two teams in the state are tied at 17. Central Catholic looking to win consecutive state championships and extend their 42 game winning streak. Notre Dame looking to bring home championship trophy number three. All tied up at 17 after one quarter of play. You know, as we look at the Quincy Notre Dame bench, Quintessa Keating is involved in what could be the game of her life. Not because she's going to play a lot. She only played one minute last night. Not because she's going to score a lot of points, but today's her birthday. And Dave and Patricia, I'm going to guess what she wants, and we're probably all going to be right. <laughs> wait, uh, wait, what would that be? It's something that's um, about uh, two and a half, three feet tall. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just love her name. Quintessa, how cool. Very good. She was actually uh, one of the Can finalists you? in a three-point uh, contest as well. Yeah, good three-point shooter for Notre Dame. This is Norton. 27 points at championship game last year. Reinhardt can't handle. You saw the long arms there. Fredericks just couldn't quite contain that rebound. Foley with it. Numbers working against her. Oh, what a dance! Great pass to Gracie Barnes. I don't know how Foley how got that, to her. Yeah, how that got through there. Boy, there were three blue jerseys. We'll take a look right here. Yep, you know what, though? She got the defense to come to her and just the right time there, getting it to Gracie Barnes. Good unselfish play, though. She could have easily taken that ball in there. But she felt that Gracie had a better angle, better position. Barnes, the 5'9 junior, only averages 2.8 points per game. We mentioned Eric Orn plays 10 people. Of those 10, nine of them are underclassmen. In fact, his lone senior, Melissa Claney, has not yet seen the floor tonight. You talk about all the you know, relationships on this Notre Dame team with all the sisters and the Gangenbackers and the Foley's, but um, Gracie Barnes, her older sister Chloe, played on this Notre Dame team, and she's now playing at Ball State. Right. Keep on coming yeah, through they, the halls they sure of do. Yep, they do. Trouble that time for Holt. Reinhardt looking to bail her out. Can't do it. A strong rip out of there by Kate Gettenbacher. And we'll go to QND. Debbie Kaufman, Eric Orn. They stood in those spots last wow. year. Not sure who that pass was to. Norton and Foley, good matchup up top. Hayes. Oh, great defense by Tori Kuhn. Coming over the top, taking a swipe at that pass, playing that perfectly. How about Kuhn, the six foot junior? What a night she's had. Yep. First quarter, 10 points, five rebounds, and defensive plays like that. So active. A lot of times when you're playing post defense, you have a tendency to just get set in your spot. And boy, she really came around and moved her feet well to get in front of that pass. Violetto got caught a little too deep in walks. That's the sixth turnover tonight for Central Catholic. Quincy Notre Dame has given it up eight times. Acceleration. Yeah. That is exactly how you want to attack the press. Once you get past it, don't pull up. Don't be passive. Attack, attack, attack the basket. I love that mentality by Cassidy Gengenbacher. 
Cassidy averaging 14.5 points per game, 2.7 rebounds per game. Good free throw shooter at 67%. She's made two of three tonight. Just a sophomore on this team. Started last year as a freshman. Had a lot of young talent on this Notre Dame team. Jordan Frerichs also a sophomore. Tori Kuhn is just a junior, so is Shannon Foley. Take Gennenbacher, just a junior. This entire starting lineup is going to be back next year for Notre Dame. 21-17 the lead, pull up from Reinhardt. She has nine points. You know, and uh, Debbie Kaufman told us about Reinhardt. She's so athletic. Oh, nice stick, sticking with it there by Tori Kuhn. We've seen that all game from her. Stopa with the initial block. Kuhn now with a dozen points. The lead hangs at four. Hold wants to chop into that. Inside position, Kuhn. She's doing it all. That's her seventh rebound tonight. Frerich showing no effects from an ankle injury. Oh, great injury. pass by Tori Kuhn. Two opportunities for Kate Gennenbacher. She'll get one. Two shots from the line coming up. Tori Kuhn down, on, buried on the baseline. Has somebody on her, passes around her defender, makes a perfect pass to Kate Gennenbacher. Backer. Tori Kuhn is playing the game of her life. Rebounding like crazy, going strong to the basket, making good on second chance opportunities, going after her own misses. One after teammates misses, but she's doing a great job on the boards. You know, that's a good. Already seven rebounds. That's a really nice substitution by Eric Orn because he's going to get the under five minute timeout coming up. So he's going to get a couple of extra seconds rest yeah. for Kuhn, who is just laying it all out there. Just even that passing. I mean, great passing out of the post by Tori Kuhn. She's an all around great game by her. She's come out with so much energy. Norton, no, oh my! Boy, and she shot that from her hip, I think. What athleticism by Allie Norton. Cassie Gengenbacher inside of the freshman Martin. Once, twice, and free throws. It's contagious, Dave Morgan. Martin going after her misses now, too. Watch Allie Norton coming right at you. Yep. Taking it and shooting it from the hip through the defense, knifing through people all over her. Great concentration to get that shot up. You know, back on the other end, Morgan Martin inside, getting good position. The shot's not falling, but sticking with it, keeping the ball high and getting fouled in the process. I love the way that Notre Dame is going after those offensive boards like nobody's business. They hold an 18 to 5 advantage wow. on the backboard. That's incredible. 18 to 5 rebounding advantage. Martin splits them. 24 21. That's the QND lead. We were tied at 17 at the end of the first quarter. The tie. In and out for Davis. Violetto to Davis. Now Bloomington Center Catholic's getting in on the action. A couple of extra opportunities here because they are aggressively going after boards. Will not go for Stopa. Rebound for Eriks. No good Foley. Foul. That's a smart foul. She's down on the ground anyway. Go ahead and take that foul. These teams need to catch their breath. It has been up and down and as hard fought as you would want in a championship game. We'll catch our breath as well. 24-21 QND over Central Catholic. It is time for the IHSA Did You Know? So I ask. Did you know that Wheaton St. Francis, Peg Kopech, and Breeze Modern Days, Fred Rakers both surpassed 1,000 career girls volleyball coaching victories in 2009? Did you know, brought to you by Realtor.com. Find your next home on Realtor.com, the most comprehensive source for real estate listings. A long one ties it for Central Catholic. 
It's dead inside and a turnover. But yet hands on a ball by Stoke, but Bialetto has it blocked by Frericks. And will go the other way. Cassidy Gengenbacher, great feed inside, can't be handled by Alyssa Claney. Just into the ball game in the last dead ball. We've seen a lot of those really nice passes on the break by Notre Dame, but here's one thing that Notre Dame has got to avoid. They play good defense in the post, surround the post player for Bloomington Central Catholic, get a turnover, but then turn it right back over. You cannot do that against this Bloomington Central Catholic team. They are too good at, making, at punishing you for your mistakes. Right now, with 4.20 to play in the second quarter, already they turned it over 11 times. Allie Norton buries that one, and we are tied at 24. Buried that like it was nothing, too. Such a good three-point shooter. Last year in his championship game, Norton hit five out of nine three-point attempts en route to 27 points. Great penetration there by Cassidy Gangenbacher. Another good bounce pass for Notre Dame. Just not able to capitalize on some of these great interior feeds. Allie Norton unloading on that one. That looked effortless. Norton is shot on this floor. Well, for how many years? Her dad was an assistant women's yep. basketball coach here for seven years. And who gets that one but Tori Goon? She got her rest. She's got her legs back. She's refreshed. Davis quickly. Maybe too quickly. Who can't hang on to that one. 14 points, seven rebounds, Kuhn seven of 12 from the field. Notre Dame shooting at 43 and a half percent. Central Catholic at 36, and that ball rolls right in. Reinhardt now double figures with 11 points. I was starting to say earlier about Jess Reinhardt, so athletic, Debbie Kaufman says that, you know, sometimes she'll go up with her right hand and all of a sudden she's shooting it with her left hand. Just a real athletic post player. Kuhn's feeling it. A chance for the Saints to take the lead. Foley. Look at Shannon Foley. Picks the pocket of Norton. Good timeout. That was almost a five-second call. Great timeout by Eric Horn. The ball was in such a position that yep. even if somebody wanted to help out Foley, there was yep. no room to come and get the ball. Because for her to make a pass out of that position right at half court, trapped at half court, was probably going to get picked off. Now here comes Foley. Now that's a tough place to pick up the basketball because you are trapped on one side by the half court line. Not a lot of real estate to deal with. Not a lot of places to go with that basketball. That's why. Had she tried to make a pass out of that trap, it probably was going to get picked up by the Central Catholic. Then they're off to the races. Great timeout. No mystery right there. Well, that's a mystery. <laughs> Who is <laughs> under that? I was going to say, no mystery as to whose fans that is. Is he even enjoying the game? I mean, can he see <laughs> through that thing? Just what we were talking about earlier on this evening, how being in a state finals like this is something you will not forget. Those fellas yeah. will never forget that, no. nor were those folks from Quincy Notre Dame. But mostly it's the players. You will cherish this memory for the rest of your life. Being in a state championship game, experiencing this with a group of girls. I mean, these girls are going to be tied together forever. So going back to the timeout, one thing to keep in mind here, with these games being televised and timeouts coming every quarter, underneath five minutes, Rather than the normal four timeouts coaches get, you get three. You get three coaches' timeouts, so you really do need to use them wisely. Eric Warren decides to take one with about three minutes left in the first half when his guard was in trouble. Tough spot for Wow. Eric. Oh, wow. I thought that was a great move. Just shuffled her feet a little bit there, but coming under the basket, having the presence of mind of knowing when to pull up and shoot that basketball. I thought that was a real athletic move by Jordan Frerichs. Frerichs, an all-stater here in her sophomore year. Norton, oh my. Oh, wow. oh is she on fire, <laughs> Ellie Norton? She's it now. Her third three, she has 11 points, and it's a three-point lead for Central Catholic. Allie. Raiders will look to answer. Allie Norton showing why she is the three-point shooting champion in the state of Illinois. Last year, she won the Queen of the Hill competition, which means that she was the champion out of all four classes. Last night, did a great job in that three-point shooting contest. We mentioned it, hitting 11 of 15 three-pointers. 
nailing all five on that last rack to win it. Well, she's just got a nice stroke. She loves the baskets here, like you mentioned. Her dad was a coach here at Illinois State for seven years. Shot, probably shot a lot of three-pointers on these baskets. Nice catch there by Kenyon Bacher to avoid the 13th turnover of the night. There is the turnover. Here comes Norton. It's going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. Pull up, free throw line. Book it. I'm surprised she didn't pull it for the three-pointer. <laughs> Allie Norton not too happy about her performance last night and the two-point win over Bishop McNamara. Is she making up for it here tonight? Yeah, I only had six points last night, fouled out with a minute to go, had to sit and watch those tense minutes that were the last final minute anyway while her teammates wrapped up the two-point victory. Her head was in her hands. She was not happy. She was grimacing. She was nervous, and she's redeeming herself here. It's taken the Saints about a quarter and a half to get their legs underneath them to withstand the onslaught that Notre Dame threw at them early on. One time it was a nine point lead for QND. Maggie Hayes to the free throw line. Hayes a five foot eight inch Maggie Hayes is the 1.3 point for game average. These last three minutes have been very, very crucial for Notre Dame. Down by six, and now seven. Bloomington Central Catholic getting some nice momentum here as the half closes down, taking a nice lead into the locker room. Great feed to Frerichs, who finishes. Frerichs cut into it. She is going aggressive to the basket, too. Her and Tori Kuhn have been so impressed with the way they are just going hard. To the baseline, Stopa. Kuhn with their eighth rebound of the night. Tony wanted to spot up to the three, couldn't do it. Instead, it comes from the left corner, ring it up. Cassidy Gengenbacher. Great passing by Notre Dame. You saw it by Tori Kuhn. Got passed inside to her, immediately outside. Great ball movement by, by Notre Dame. Huge bucket by Gengenbacher. It's a two point game. And that was a little bit too easy for Emily oh, Gialetto. Good drive to the basket. Gialetto's first basket of the night. Seeing some good basketball out of these two teams. Really playing well. Down to our final 30 seconds of the first half. That will be a walk on Clady. <laughs> 35 31. state champions on top in the closing moments of the first half. Notre Dame's got to play some lockdown defense here. You do not want Bloomington Central Catholic to score yet again before the end of the half. Well, that was a little danger right there with the communication between Norton and Stopa. I like that pressure by Notre Dame. Reinhardt working on two. With four seconds. Norton. Martin the rebound, and that's how the first half will come to an end. A big lead in the first quarter for Quincy Notre Dame. Central Catholic breaks a 17-all first quarter tie, and they lead it 35-31 here at the half in your 2A state championship ball game, a rematch of last year's game, won by Bloomington Central Catholic. 64-58, and standing by now with Matt Rodewell. Coach, Notre Dame got out to a, a quick start against you guys. You climb back in it. What do you do in the second half? We got to box out. That's a big thing right now. They're getting too many offensive rebounds, and they're getting put putbacks. You know, they haven't shot from the outside. We went to the zone for a little bit, and I thought we got some uh, points off of it, and our press got better, and then uh, our two big all-staters really stepped up and asked Allie and Jess, but everybody's got to do it tonight. Okay, thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. The guys, 42-game winning streak on the line right now. Indeed, but it's a four-point lead. For Central Catholic, they'll head to the locker room on top 35-31. Halftime festivities coming up next from Redbird Arena.
And welcome back to Redbird Arena here at Illinois State University. The Class 2A state championship game going on right now. And our halftime score is uh, Bloomington Central Catholic with a 35-31 lead on Quincy Notre Dame in a rematch from the Stamp, uh, state championship game from 2010. Matt Rodewald with you here courtside as we continue here with our coverage of IHSA state championship basketball. America's original March Madness as we continue next weekend with 3A and 4A right here on this very court. Doug Collins scored here at Redbird Arena. So you don't want to miss that. It'll be 3A in the afternoon on Friday and Saturday, and of course, 4A at the evening, the nightcaps at 6.30 on both Friday night and Saturday night. Earlier today, we had 1A state championship decided. West Central coming out with a win over River Ridge in that state championship game. Their ceremonies and their rallies are going on right now in their respective communities of the 1A championship participants. So hope they get to celebrate tonight and uh, fun for all down here in Normal, Illinois. We still have another state championship to be decided tonight. Will Bloomington Central Catholic keep the winning streak alive? Will Quincy Notre Dame get their first state championship in 27 years? We're going to find out here in about 16 minutes of basketball. Stay with us here on the IHSA Television Network. Getting ready to start the second half here at Redbird Arena. Central Catholic with a 35-31 lead on Quincy Notre Dame with the Raiders head coach, Eric Warner. Uh, you had a nice lead early on. They got back in it. What did you tell your kids here at halftime? Well, they did a great job. Obviously, uh, you know, BCC is a champion. They know how to get back in the ball game. Uh, we survived their little spurt. We need to come out and establish ourselves in the first three minutes, have a couple good possessions, get the ball back down to Coon Perks. All right, good luck in the second half, Coach. First couple of minutes are always the most important. That's what every coach will tell you. No different here. Dave and Patricia getting us set for the second half. You know, you make a great point there, Matt, the first few minutes, and that indeed was what happened to QND in the opening part of the ball game. They got exactly what Eric Warren wanted. They ran out to the lead exactly as they wanted, but then the numbers started evening out a little bit. Well, but you know what's really keeping Notre Dame in this game is rebounding a 23 to 10 advantage on the board. Notre Dame has 15 second chance points. They're doing a great job of hustling after the basketball, and that's what you've got to do against a quality team like Bloomington Central Catholic. And on the other side, the defending state champs, they can run Allie Norton at you, they can run Jess Reinhardt at you. Let's take a look at our first half highlights. I have a feeling that they just may pop up a little bit in here, but first of all, early on, it was all QND. Jordan Frerichs, the sophomore, got things going. Good inside move there by Lindsey Stopa. But that's the young lady that's had an outstanding first half, Tori Kuhn. Tori Kuhn has been all over the place. She even had a couple jumpers, but most of her work has been done inside. Then Allie Norton, how about the three-pointers from her? She's had three three-pointers. Bagging that one is the other outside yeah. threat. That's Cassidy Gengenbacher. But back to Norton and Reinhardt. They lead the way. Norton, I mean, you talk about somebody with poise. Yeah. She's the one that has it, 13 points in the first half. Well, we've talked about it. She had six points last night against Nashville, very disappointed and fouling out, and she's all over the place, lighting up the scoreboard today with th 13 points, three three-pointers. She's doing a great job of leading this basketball team. It's a four-point lead for your defending state champions in Class 2A. We're ready for two more quarters of basketball and a big trophy to come right now. Central Catholic 35-31 over Quincy Notre Dame. We begin the second half. Quincy Notre Dame with it, looking for their third, third state championship. Bloomington Central Catholic looking for their second and two straight trips here to Redbird Arena. With Matt Rodewald and Patricia Babcock McGraw, I'm Dave Bernhardt. So happy you've joined us here on IHSA Television as well as ESPN3. We'll look for that quick early start. That you heard Eric Orn said he wanted here in the third quarter. Coon guarded by Davis. Davis, 5'10 sophomore. Gengenbacher says, why not? <laughs> Looking like Allie Norton a little bit on that shot. They left her open. It's a one-point game. <laughs> Frerich's got her hand on the ball. Not enough. Violetto says, I'll give it a shot. Such long arm, yeah. Fialetto. So we were talking about before, Dave. Notre Dame, you get the basketball back. You've got to keep it. You can't turn it right back over to Bloomington Central Catholic. Frerichs, quick baseline move. Ooh, that is a fast first step. Kate Gennenbacher, no. How about that fight for the basketball, though? 
Gengenbacher looks it down. Two in a row for Cassidy Gengenbacher. And this game is tied at 37. Three threes tonight for the sophomore. We talked before she had that big three-pointer to put Notre Dame ahead of Nashville last night. She's been shooting very well from beyond the arc in this tournament. That's the first, that's the second. We're tied 37-37. Just like that, too, right out of the box. Well, you look at Gengenbacher's numbers, and of course, these numbers are available to everybody in the, the program. And for the scouting purposes, it's really somewhat surprising you give her a decent look from that arc. Yeah. Number one three-point shooter on this Notre Dame basketball team. Tough pass to handle for Reinhardt from Norton. Here come the Lady Raiders. Great pass. Good peripheral vision by Foley. Well, you had some movement there from Cassie Gengenbacher, the sophomore Jordan Frericks, and Foley. But yet nothing comes out of it except a foul on Kuhn. That's her second foul. Three fouls for Danielle Davis for Bloomington Central Catholic. That's it. That's the only person with three. This was a six-point win last year between these two teams in the state championship. Into Reinhardt. Notre Dame really overplaying the passing lane. Shannon Foley all over that play for uh, Bloomington Central Catholic. She read it so well, jumped in front of the passing lane and came out with that steal, just couldn't hang on to it. Right, Forley's so used to being in state championship ball game. She scored the game-winning goal for this state championship soccer team in the title game against Mantino. She's been there and done that. They're fighting for it again. There's a great soccer connection on this team. Mark Longo, he's an assistant coach for the basketball team. He was the head coach of that 1A state championship soccer team. Also on that team, Alessa Claney, Contessa Keating, Kate Gennenbacher, Jordan Frerichs, and Shannon Foley. When you talk about Shannon Foley's defense, that's what she's known for on this basketball team. And her sister Cassidy is on this team, and the two of them, Shannon says that they grew up playing in, against each other, of course, in the driveway, but they weren't so much about offense, they were about defense and how they could stop each other. And they said that they really gained a lot of great defensive habits through those games in the driveway. Good rebound by Gengenbacher. Great move. Now, a lot of folks would see that and say it was just a drive to the basket. But as soon as she hit the elbow, yep. she made that great move. Yep. Take a look at it right here. Driving down here, and then she transfers her weight to get around the defender. Great instincts for the game right there. And that free throw will give QND the lead. Talk about how each of these two teams have weathered the storm here in just the first two and a half quarters. Big early lead by Notre Dame. Central Catholic comes back, and now it's Cassidy Gengenbacher with eight points here in the opening two and a half minutes. It's given Quincy Notre Dame the 39-37 advantage. And some folks would look at Bloomington Central Catholic and say, well, you know, you haven't been in close games, too many close games this year. Will you crack, especially in the stage? Well, we saw last night when they were challenged, they just hung tough. They showed did. what they were made of. Senior dominated team. A lot of mental toughness in that game. They were really pushed to the brink. Backcourt violation. That is the 11th turnover for Central Catholic. On the other side, Notre Dame with 17 turnovers, yet they lead by two. It's that rebounding. It's keeping them in this game. 26 rebounds for Notre Dame. Just 11 for Bloomington Central Catholic. Incredible. Foley on the runner. Boy, there are wars underneath that basket you don't want to be a part of, yet there's 10 players on this floor 
battling for the state title. We have a timeout on the floor. It's a good one here in normal, 39-37. Now the lead belongs to the Lady Raiders. IHSA's presentation of the girls class 1A and 2A championships are brought to you by Country Financial. What's your idea of financial security? And by the National Association of Realtors. When you're ready to buy or sell a home, contact a Realtor, a member of the National Association of Realtors. And we would like to thank our sponsors for supporting us here in our state tournament coverage of IHSA basketball. Again, as Matt mentioned earlier, we'll be right back here next week for the 3A and 4A matchups before heading down Interstate 74 in a couple of weeks. We'll get started with boys action. The top two teams in the state have been ranked number one and number two for nearly the entire season. Only one loss between them and only two points separate them here midway through the third quarter. Breaking the press. Frerichs unable to finish. Oh, I thought that that was a great press breaker by Notre Dame. You've got to capitalize on those shots right under the basket. Those bunnies, those are the frustrating ones. You want those back. Allie Norton, the five foot six inch senior guard. Played on the state championship team last year with her sister Carly. Gets it to Reinhardt, fellow All-Stater, no. Off of her foot, we go the other way. A couple frustrating misses down low by both teams. I think both teams are doing a good job of getting the ball in the paint, trying to get those high percentage shots, just not making the high percentage shots. Money players tonight have come up big for these two teams. Gengenbacher, Kuhn, and Frerichs, 36 of the 39 points for QND. Norton and Reinhardt have combined for 24 of the 37 that Bloomington Central Catholic has scored. Debbie Kaufman never seems to lose her composure. Eric Orn completely in control as well. That's on the outside. Ooh, a lot of contact in there. Morgan Martin was lucky just to hold on to that ball. Well, we saw it early on when this game started. It was a very physical game early, very fast paced game early. It's, it's settled down now into more of a, a half court rather than a frenetic type pace. I think the legs are going a little bit. So you've got to be proficient in both games. Both these teams show that they can run. Now they've got to work it strategize and be efficient in the half court game. That's efficiency right there. You can't get a better look at the basket than that. Cassidy Gengenbacher, nice job of driving to the basket. 10 points here in the third quarter. She has given her team a four point lead. She has scored all 10 of the Lady Raiders points here in oh, the first quarter. Great job minute. by Shannon Foley, jumping up to tip that basketball. She's got to convert on this though. She does. Defense to offense, we've been talking about it all day, Dave. 43-37. Norton one-on-one -on -one battle with Foley. And that will go to Quincy Notre Dame. Debbie Kaufman is saying, hey, wasn't that touch by Martin. Shannon Foley, we talk about her soccer skills. Here's her defensive skills. Well, you know, she's not exactly the tallest player on the floor, 5'7". Tip that one. Nice athleticism by Foley. The other way, the press turns it over. Norton. Great rebound by Morgan Martin. You know, she's given Tori Kuhn a nice break on the bench. Tori Kuhn had that second foul. Eric Warren took her out, and Morgan Martin is really doing a nice Central job of sustaining, giving Notre Dame a great inside presence, coming up with some loose balls and rebounds, hanging tough in there, doing a nice job of filling in for Tori Kuhn. Now sister for sister is the QND substitution into the ball game for Notre Dame. The freshman Cassidy Foley replacing her junior sister Shannon. Frerichs weaving her way through this press. Gengenbacher open. Oh, look at Morgan Martin go after that ball. That is a strong freshman right there. 
It's about desire at this point, Dave. It's the state championship game. You've got to lay it all on the line. You've got to go for every ball. Morgan Martin tracking it down. Staying strong, the freshman comes up with another big play for Notre Dame. That is the focus that Eric Orn wanted from his freshman. The emphasis here with Martin, crashed the offensive board. Central Catholic led 35-31. It's a 13-2 run here to open the third quarter for Notre Dame. 14-2 and a lead of eight for the Lady Raiders. We talk about how many close games that Bloomington Central Catholic played, not many. How many times have they been down by eight? Probably not very many at all, maybe never. Reinhardt will go to the free throw line. We mentioned Bloomington Central Catholic tested by Bishop McNamara last night, but never gave up the lead in that ball game. Now you look at the board, it's a little bit different being down by eight with 2.44 to play the third quarter than in the first quarter here tonight. Absolutely. Reinhardt with her 12th point of the night. She's all gotten all but four of those points from the free throw line. Megan O'Donnell enters the game for Central Catholic. Megan O'Donnell in. Daniel Davis out for BCC. Ferrick to Genkenbacher and that's a travel. Shannon Foley re enters the game. Now Foley for Foley. Good move by Eric Horn to give Shannon Foley a little bit of a breather. She has been working hard on the defensive end, handling the ball, doing most of the ball handling against this tough Bloomington Central Catholic press. Got a little bit of a breather for her. Norton has not been able to get free here in the third quarter. Great oh, what a move, move. by Jess Reinhardt. Yes, that spin move, strong move to the basket. That is why she is a first team All-Stater. And yet another turnover. That'll be 20 now for Notre Dame. Two in a row, just the same. You know, Bloomington Central Catholic is great at coming up with steals. They've got a ton in this game, 11 so far, but they also make you play so fast and make you turn the ball over and do things that you don't want to do. Two travels in a row there. That's not normally what Notre Dame is all about, but Bloomington Central Catholic could make you play fast. An opportunity here to convert off a turnover. Reinhardt felt Morgan go down behind her. She begged for the ball. She got it. She will get two free throws with a chance to cut the lead to two. Notre Dame foul on 44, Morgan Martin. Her third personal, 15 foul, Jess Reinhardt. Reinhardt, 7 of 8 from the line tonight. 15 points and four rebounds. <laughs> that eight point lead yeah. has very quickly yes. shrunk. To no, two. You figured that Bloomington Central Catholic Lindsay wasn't going to go away easily. It was 45 37 moments ago. From behind Bialetto, forces a turnover, yet another. Three in a row. Well, and this is what. Debbie Kaufman and all the coaches across the state actually will tell you the press, yes, it's going to first turnovers, but start looking at what happens in the third and fourth quarter. As much mental as physical. Well, it's physically taxing to have to deal with this kind of pressure, this kind of intense pressure the entire game. Norton for the tie. Great drive to the basket. Last wow, that was a dangerous pass. Martin contact. Oh, wow. What a Cut great it. move by the freshman. What kind of body control did that take to catch that ball, a dangerous Martin pass right over the top Martin. of the defense, and then going up strong with the contact, taking a couple dribbles. Great move by Morgan Martin. Martin, a state Christmas champion in grade school. 
UND after the 8-0 run by Central Catholic goes on top by three following that three-point play. We have 90 seconds to play in the third quarter. This is your Class 2A state championship game. Tough pass, nice catch, Violetto. Two free throws. A good take to the basket. I like the mentality of both these teams. Even though they're tired, they are still going strong to the basket, making things happen, drawing contact, drawing fouls. Both of these teams have shown so much aggressiveness. You think there might be something on the line here tonight or something? Maybe, I don't know. Uh, both these teams <laughs> have been thinking about this for 365 days. A lot right. of folks figured it would come right back down to this. Yeah, the expectations for both of these teams all season long have just been unbelievable. Talk about pressure, the target on your back, the bullseye on your back, and both of these teams live up to those expectations. And what a championship game they are giving us. That was trouble from Gengenbacher all the way down the floor. Well, this truly, Trisha, is what a championship game is supposed to be, right? I mean, yep. ideally, you get the two best teams in the state playing and playing well, and that's what we've had tonight. And they battle to the very end. A two-point game here with a minute to go in the third quarter. Incredible. Into the post. Rarick's nice wow. turnaround. Real nice turnaround. Way to use the backboard, too. Jordan Frerick. And hustling points. back on defense. Tipping the ball away and giving Notre Dame the basketball back. Frerichs, another soccer player, great athlete, first team yeah. All-Stater in basketball. Suffered a badly sprained ankle in practice on Sunday. Didn't practice until the shoot around here on Thursday. She shows no effects of that here tonight. I was going to say, she looked a little slow at the beginning of yesterday's semifinal, but today she has been all over the court. Gracie Barnes aggressively attacking the press here. Barnes, you're going to go look at her. Wearing that number 10 jersey, 5'9 junior. Oh, great pass off the inbounds. But just as good a block by Danielle Davis. The other end, Stopa. Frerichs with the foul. That is her fourth foul of the night, and it comes with 36 seconds to play in this quarter. I thought that was a good foul, but a bad foul. Her fourth foul for her, but uh, that was almost a certain two. Central Catholic, 13 of 16 from the line tonight. Tori Kuhn has three fouls. She's on the QND bench. Stopa cuts the lead to three. Tough spot yep. for Kristen Gengenbacher. Oh. They come out of it. Well, there are bodies crashing inside. Wow, how did that ball get out of that trap? That is the worst place in the world to stop. Right on either side of that half court line. You are trapping yourself because you're right up against that line. The defenders have you cornered. And yet somehow that ball gets out of there and Notre Dame almost gets a layup out of it. Incredible. Final seconds of the third quarter. With seven. They get it to Reinhardt. Have to force a shot, not necessarily. They had a little bit of time, but we'll go to the fourth quarter. Quincy Notre Dame looking to give Bloomington Central Catholic their first loss of the season, the first loss in 43 games. And if they do that, they will win the title in Class 2A. To the fourth quarter we go. It's Notre Dame 50, Bloomington Central Catholic 47. Welcome back to the state championship game here at Redbird Arena or for the Central Catholic kids. I guess it's a masquerade party. Take a look at the costumes. We've got Captain America. We've got Bert and Ernie, a couple of bananas, a track jersey dressed up as a basketball uniform, and that green thing, Dave and Patricia, Patricia that we've seen at all sorts of sporting events nowadays. You know, it's not really a costume. It's just some green slip over their head. That's from the TV show Always Sunny in Philadelphia. 
and it just is a bad superhero. It's not not funny at all, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> all right then. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Rodewald with your ratings of superheroes in the yes. Birmingham Central Catholic section. Quincy Notre Dame, their theme this season, go the distance. They need eight more minutes. Frerichs playing with four fouls. Very aggressive to the hole. And she'll net a two free, no, they'll call it a held ball. The possession will go to Bloomington Central Catholic. But how many times, even though Notre Dame didn't end up with that ball, how many times have we seen Notre Dame get extra chances, extra looks at the basket just by simply going after missed shots? The rebounding by Notre Dame has been outstanding in this game. 31 to 15 advantage on the board for Notre Dame. Every possession so final right now. Stopa, no. Put back, no. Rebound Kuhn, she sat a lot of that third quarter with three fouls, her ninth board of the night. Kate Gennenbacher. To Frericks. Now set with Foley. But now sitting all that time has its advantages for Tori Kuhn. She's got fresh legs. She can play this entire fourth quarter and go real strong with it. The foul situation now. Both teams in the bonus. It'll be the eighth foul on Central Catholic. Seven team fouls charged to Quincy Notre Dame. You're looking at free throw shooting numbers. Central Catholic has a team the advantage, 69% to 61. Last night, Raiders from QND only 51.5%. Cassie Gengenbacher now with 17 points. And the lead. Goes to five. It was tied at 17 at the end of the first quarter. Central Catholic with a 35-31 lead at the half. A 14-2 run to open a third quarter by Quincy Notre Dame. Matched by an 8-0 spurt by Central Catholic. And after that travel by Jess Reinhardt, a chance for the Lady Raiders from Quincy to build on this five-point advantage. Better hurry, she gets it in. Yep. That was close, that was about four and a half count right there. Gengenbacher dribbles out of it. Foley right there. Shannon Foley in the mix again, making things happen defensively. She never gives up on that basketball. Even backpedaling to get back on defense, she's still getting her nose right on the ball. Kuhn really wants it in the post. Oh, great pass out of the post. Triple team turns and still sees her teammate streaking to the basket. Outstanding pass. Hey, Gennenbacher, credit for the bucket. It's a 54-47 lead. The Central Catholic, and they weather the storm once again. Reinhardt looking to take over. Count the bucket. Great take to the basket, splitting defenders on her way. Wow, that was some athleticism that we've been talking about today of Jess Reinhardt. It's that nice little spin. She gets there and then has the fingertip spin. Yep. Withstands the con contact as well. A huge three-point play for Reinhardt. Helps keep the Raiders, or the Saints rather, within four. We've talked about Tori Kuhn with her offensive skills. Watch this pass right here. Yep. Boom. Out of the defense, she senses that third defender coming. And she knows the teammate's open somewhere, and she finds her. Frerichs. Oh, great take to the basket. I cannot believe that was too easy. Where was the defense on that play? Gennon Barker back-to-back buckets, 56-50. That's the QND lead, 525. Norton has been quiet since the big first half. Can't get that three to go. Possession to Notre Dame. Reinhardt with 20 points tonight. She leads all scores. Oh, 
Full court pressure. UND has turned the ball over 21 times to Foley. Gennenbacher again. Oh, grabbing the rebound. And the story of this game will be the rebounding numbers, but when you go online, IHSA.org, and you can call up all the stat sheets, take a look at the offensive yes. boards. Right. Coming up on the five minute mark. Hold inside to Reinhardt. He was looking for another three point play. Jess Reinhardt is putting this basketball team on her back right now. Her Bloomington Central Catholic teammates are looking for her. She's posting up strong in the paint, using her body well, really doing a nice job. And the defense is focused on her. She's just so strong, does such a nice job with her positioning. Her instincts are good, which way to turn to the basket. And then she's getting fouled on top of it. She's having a great game. 22 points, 11 of 12 from the line. And with that horn, you get your under five minute timeout. A four point game into your 2A championship. Notre Dame the advantage as we go to break. That's a very simple graphic right there. Class 2A championship. Fourth quarter, 454 to play. Notre Dame 56, Central Catholic 52. What it doesn't tell you, Central Catholic on a 42 game winning streak. They are 31. Make that 32 and 0 this year. Quincy Notre Dame only one loss on the season. They started their season with 24 straight wins. The only loss they suffered with at the hands of one of the top teams in the nation, Carnet Word, out of St. Louis. These teams played last year for the state championship. It was a six-point win for Central Catholic. This is crunch time now, Dave. This is about heart right now. These coaches, they don't really have to draw up any plays at this point. It's just how much do you want it? And that's Kuhn who wants it badly yep. for the putback. That's desire right there. That's determination. That is heart going up after that basketball strong. Tori Kuhn, a transfer from Quincy High School last year, transferring from a public to a private school. You sit out of here. She also had an ACL injury, did not play last year in the state finals. Coming up big in a championship game here tonight. No ball. Notre Dame. Possession to Notre Dame with 422 left. There's a lot of nervous folks from Bloomington in this arena. Remember, Frerich's playing with four fouls. Check that, they have Frerich's with three fouls, so they took a foul away from Frerich. She has three, Martin has four. Great pass again. They are so focused on Tori Kuhn. She's had such a great game. Three defenders, they are leaving people wide open under the basket, and Notre Dame is capitalizing. That's three baskets now for Kate Gennenbacher here in the fourth quarter. 60 to 52, the lead for the Lady Raiders. And a chance to build on it here. Free throws coming up. And again, this is not a replay from about five minutes ago. This is most recent. <laughs> yep. Well, we've seen this play a couple of times now. Look at how the Bloomington Central Catholic defense is just so consumed by Tori Kuhn. She's been so active today. They must focus on her, but in doing that, they're forgetting about everybody else on this Notre Dame basketball team, and Notre Dame is punishing them. Finding the open player, Tori Kuhn is doing a great job of passing out of those double and triple teams. 61, 52 matches the biggest lead of the night. First time was in the first quarter. Now it's with 3.35 to play. By 10. And now is the time if Bloomington Central Catholic can go back to back. Now is the time they need to react. Not that time for Norton. Battling Gengenbacher on defense. Davis three, no.
And the Quincy Notre Dame fans glancing at the scoreboard, they see 309 left. Timeout call, and they see a 10 point lead. Eric Orn has a very calm huddle. So does Central Catholic. We'll be back. Hey, welcome back to Redbird Arena. Looking at the uh, Bloomington Central Catholic huddle. Dubby Kaufman stressing to her kids that take one possession at a time. Down by 10 points, you can't get it all back in one clip. So one possession at a time. Look to go inside to Reinhardt and maybe get a, a bucket and a foul. Find that in a, a couple more points at a time. Dave Patricia. Thank you very much. And each possession indeed will count. So Bloomington Central Catholic team 32 and 0. They have rolled through the competition this year. A lot of people thought they just would roll right through all the way to another state title. We still have three minutes to play. Absolutely. Bloomington Central Catholic beat Litchfield in a super to get here. They forced 36 turnovers on 24 steals, held Litchfield a 24% field goal percentage. And after the game, Litchfield coach Bob Allen said, this is the best girls team, talking about Bloomington, Bloomington Central Catholic, that I've seen in a long time. It'll take a special team to beat Bloomington Central Catholic. Notre Dame is getting real close to being that special basketball team. They are playing an outstanding game against the number one team in the state, a team that a lot of people thought would repeat as state champions. They've got a 10 point lead under three minutes to go. Defense, which was so strong early for Notre Dame, will look to lock it down now. And on the ball, disrupting the offense, two and a half to play, the lead still at 10. The great thing about Bloomington Central Catholic, they are so balanced, they have so many weapons. They can go with, um, with just Reinhardt inside. They can go with Allie Norton outside. They've got a lot of different weapons to cut into this lead quickly. I think that's the key word, your last word, quickly. Yes, quickly. Pick by Frerichs on the breakaway. Notre Dame by 12. Jordan Frerichs. Dave, we were talking about mental fortitude at the top. And that's exactly what this Bloomington Central Catholic team is going to have to show mental toughness, staying in this basketball game mentally, not giving up. Allie Norton with her 17th point of the night. It's got to be a little shell shock for this team. Like we said, they are used to rolling over teams. Violetto riding Gengenbacher. Jordan Frerichs, just a sophomore. She's come up big here in this title game tonight. Great anticipation. At the line, it'll be Cassidy Gengenbacher. This sophomore has 18 points. Ferrix, fellow sophomore with 14. Kuhn, the junior, with 16 points. And the lead grows. Norton pushed out with a minute 40 to play. They'll get Foley on that one. That will be the 10th foul. On Quincy Notre Dame, two free throws for Norton. Number two, Shannon Foley, for third personal, 10th team foul. Allie Norton at the line for Central Catholic with two shots. Notre Dame is playing such good defense. Bloomington Central Catholic really needs to be quicker about their offensive possessions. Even on that play, even though Allie Norton got fouled, too much dribbling out on the perimeter. You've got to be taking it to the basket, looking inside for uh, Reinhardt not messing around, wasting time. But Notre Dame's defense has been so tough. It's tough to get good looks. They really are closing down the gaps very nicely. Talk about the defense that Notre Dame has played. The turnover number is mounting up now for Central Catholic, 22 compared to 24 for Notre Dame. And that rebounding advantage, 37 to 18. And that's the ball game right there, Dave. Gangenbacher. To Foley, they'll look to run some block here. Central Catholic looks a little fatigued right now. Norton will have to foul. He's not happy about it. She's hoping somebody else could do the dirty deed. 
Shannon Foley will go to the free throw line. You'll look at the stats after this ball game. Right now, you'll see Shannon Foley with two points. And it will not okay, come shot. close to stating the impact she had in this yeah. game. She's been huge. Her defensive presence has really meant so much to Notre Dame, overplaying the passing lanes, getting up on Bloomington Central Catholic's ball handlers, creating all kinds of havoc, tips, deflections, playing the passing lanes. She's just been all over the place tonight, really sparking her team from a defensive perspective. On the move is Reinhardt. Norton launches three ball, uh-uh, rebound Kuhn. And a quick foul, Tori Kuhn. A double-double for her tonight in the title game, 16 points, 10 boards. 68 seconds left in this 2A championship game. No spokes on that QND bench. You can only imagine the emotions going through them right now. Kuhn, scoreless last night, missed all six of her shots from the field. Missed all four free throws last night. She had 10 first quarter points. 10 of the 17 that QND scored in that opening period. She has 17 points tonight. is at 12, coming up on a minute to play. And the fans from Quincy come to their feet. They're feeling it, they're sensing it, and so are the Notre Dame players, smiles on their faces. Tori Kuhn, you know what she's saying? Enough. We've gotta still be serious for this last minute. She's not ready to take anything for granted at this point. Foley's missed her last two. You're playing your 32nd game. You worked so hard in the offseason during the practices, you don't want to give it up with 60 seconds left. No. Anything can happen, but it sure is looking good for Notre Dame. They will head to their bench, trying to keep their emotions in check in a joyful way. On the other side, Bloomington Central Catholic, they need something big to happen and in a hurry. When we come back, we'll get set to crown a state champion. Which way will it go? A big lead for the Lady Raiders. Right there in the middle of the Quincy Notre Dame huddle. They have come up huge. They trailed 35-31 at halftime. And they lead now by 13. It was a 14-2 run to open the third quarter. However, Central Catholic came back, tied the game at 45. QND cut their second win. You see the numbers on the board. The Lincoln Central Catholic is going to have to earn it. Full court pressure here put on by QND. North looking for a three-point play that way. Possession will stay with the Saints. One side of this floor, that's right, they're dressed in the gold right there, ready to bust loose. And the other side, a lot of people wearing black, dark blue, and not feeling so well. Very quiet Central Catholic fan section. Jess Reinhardt wrapping up her high school career. She has 22 points. She'll play her collegiate basketball at Lewis University in Romeoville. She has stuck 23 points on the board here tonight. She's had a great game. Really doing a nice job inside, going strong inside, putting this team on her back. You know, Bloomington Central Catholic, I know it's not going to feel like it if this game ends up the way it looks like it will. They're going to, you know, be hurt. It's going to be tough, but boy, they have nothing to hang their heads about. What an outstanding season 
that they have had undefeated through the regular season, 31, or 32 and 0 heading into this game. Defending state champions, they have been on quite a ride, Dave. Well, you talk a ride that these seniors have taken. 117 wins and six losses. They've won the last three inner city titles here in the Bloomington Normal Area, the last three state farm classics. These seniors have won three Corn Belt Conference titles in a row in each of their freshman years, each of those categories. They finished second, and yet they've been very humble about their success. <laughs> Cassidy Gengenbacher with 21 points. Norton. You can rattle that one in. Ellie Norton with 22 points. They're not ready to go home yet. So to our sideline reporter right now, Matt Rodewald. Just some rally information for everybody. If you're watching at home, the Bloomington Central Catholic folks will gather tomorrow at the school at noon to celebrate. And for the Quincy Notre Dame folks, that's going to be a party on Monday. Why Monday? Well, they want to have the students in session, make sure everybody's there. I asked, them, is the public welcome? They said, everybody's welcome. Come on by. So a couple of parties coming up for two schools. And it looks like a history here in the making with a streak about to go down if this holds up. This 42-game winning streak for Central Catholic, the 12th longest in state history. And when you think as to how many teams you play in that span who are gunning for you every yeah. single night, 42 in a row is amazing. Yes, it sure is. They've had the bullseye on their backs all season long. So has Notre Dame. You know, state runner-up last season. Excellent tradition there. Already two state titles at Notre Dame in 83 and 84, second place in 81 in 2010, third place in 82, fourth place in 2008, 12 sectional titles, 23 regional championships, 119 and seven in the last four years. I mean, I'm running out of breath here less, listing all their accolades. What a great program Notre Dame is about to get their first state title since the 1980s. What an exciting moment for this program. All right, now they just want to get it in. That'd be a pretty good person to get it to. Cassidy Gengenbacher will go to the free throw line. She's been there more than anybody else wearing a Notre Dame uniform. She's hit 10 of her 12 free throws tonight. You know, you have to figure that Notre Dame was going to be hungry coming into this game. You know, you're kind of playing second fiddle to this Bloomington Central Catholic team all season long. They're number one, you're number two. They beat you last year in this very game. And you, they, you knew that they were hungry to come in here and reverse their fortune. They certainly have done that today. They've played an incredible game from start to finish. I've been so impressed with the hustle that they've shown never backing down, never giving up on a ball, whether it was a rebound, a loose ball, tips, deflections. They've been all over the place. And Eric Orn has brought in several seniors. He doesn't play many seniors, nearly an entire underclass team. Allie Norton's not going to go home. That senior knocks it down for a 24th point. And fouled in the backcourt will be Alessa Clenny, one of these seniors, also on the floor, Contessa Keating. She's a senior. Joining them is fellow senior Kitty Croder. And they've got as big a smiles on their faces as anybody. And so do the girls on the bench. They are all holding hands. They're smiling from ear to ear. They can barely contain themselves. Their, their knees are going up and down. Their feet tapping back and forth. They are ready to explode off of that bench. Well, you're talking about how Bloomington Central Catholic knocked off Quincy Notre Dame last year, and it was always on their mind. Yeah, that's what the team mentioned. Every single day in practice, the motivator during all those practices was Bloomington Central Catholic. Mm -hmm. And here they are tonight. Yep. Melissa Claney at the line. Yeah. Underneath 20 seconds of play, Debbie Kaufman has cleared her bench. She's gotten as many people in as she can, and the whistle stops play with 11 seconds left on the drive by Maggie Hayes. What a long journey a high school basketball season is. It is. It is a grind. It's a grind. And how long it is, all the holidays that you miss with your family. You know, you're out for Thanksgiving, Christmas. Now, it, this is a long, grueling road. And 
how sweet it is to end it with the state championship. Of course, Debbie Kaufman may somewhat disagree with that right now, but, but yet <laughs> speaking with her this week, you get the impression she's in it for more than just wins. It's the relationships that she will have their players on how much she absolutely loves this senior group for their accomplishments and how they've handled those accomplishments. And she's got a lot of talent coming back too. Let's face that too. This program is going to be around for a long, long time. Competing for state championships. JC Cornwell, a senior, gets a chance to score here in the state title game. Talk about Notre Dame. Of their top 10 players this year, nine are underclassmen. Alyssa Claney got the most minutes of any senior. Yeah, and Cornell gets her name in the book. The final seconds. And here in Bloomington Normal, you can crown the Lady Raiders from Quincy Notre Dame your 2011 Class 2A state champs. One night ago, that state championship team right there trailed 11 to nothing a minute into the second quarter. And here they are, your title holders in 2A. That is a distant memory now. What an inspiring basketball game that Notre Dame played here tonight. You know, it's easy to buy into the mystique of an undefeated team, the defending state champs, a team that beat you on this very court in this very game one year ago. I was so impressed with Notre Dame's calm and poise, the hustle that they showed going every, after every loose ball, after every rebound, such a great advantage for them on the boards. 39 to 21, many of those coming on the offensive glass. They just wanted this basketball game. So much heart, desire, determination from this team. They were hungry to come back here seeking redemption. They got it. What a special moment for Notre Dame. You no, know, no, what's interesting about that is yes, there are a lot of players that came back. However, Notre Dame lost 70% of their scoring. But yet, Eric Gorn has a state title in his back pocket. He's with Matt Rodewald. Well, Coach, at first you don't succeed. Try again. How about one year later, 27 years since the state championship for your program? Well, yeah, and it, it's amazing. What an effort by these girls. Uh, I just can't. I, I, I'm just so elated right now for them. They've worked so hard. You know, this all starts in June and come late right now. So it, it, it really is a blessing. I, I'm very happy for them. I'm just super excited. I hope they enjoy this. You said out of the halftime, uh, first three minutes are most important. I think you capitalized on that tonight. We did. We did. We came out, made some big shots by Cassidy Gannon Bocker, and it went from there. Go celebrate with your team, Coach. Thank you very much. 27 years, 1984 in the two-class system. The Raiders are champs once again, guys. Congratulations to those Lady Raiders. They will finish their season with a 31 and one record, Bloomington Central Catholic, 32 and one. You don't get many opportunities in high school sports, those of you watching at home, watching on ESPN3, or being here in attendance, where you really get to see the top two teams for the entire season playing for the state championship game and see two teams play as well as they did tonight. Such a fitting ending to the season, and what a great basketball game that we were treated to, a fight to the end. Outstanding basketball here tonight at Redbird Arena. Let's go to Jeff Fritzen for our awards here in our championship game. With a final record of 32 wins and one loss. First meet the chaplain of Central Catholic High School, Father Pilon. <laughs> Principal Joy Allen. We got a little cheerleading up in here. Athletic trainer Ashley Kingston. Head coach Debbie Kaufman. Assistant coach Mindy Smith. Assistant coach Sherry Mitchell. Assistant coach Jason Davis. Congratulations. 
Scorekeeper, Gary Thompson. I got it, I got it, thank you. Thanks a lot. Manager, Allison Lancaster. Manager, Allie Means. And the Saints squad members, number four, Caroline Holt. Number 11, Maggie Hayes. Number 12, Allie Norton. Number 15, Mackenzie Jamison. Number 20, Emily Violetto. Twenty-one, Annie O'Malley. Twenty-two, Megan O'Donnell. Number twenty-four, Lindsay Stopa. Number thirty-one, Jess Reinhardt. Good career, kid. Good job. Congratulations. Number 32, Danielle Davis. Congratulations. 33, Molly McGraw. And number 35, Lee Hoffman in stone. At this time, let's meet the Lady Raiders of Notre Dame High School who finished the 2010-11 season in first place with a final record of 31 wins and one loss. First meet the principal of Notre Dame, Ray Heilman. Thank you, sir. Athletic Director, Bill Connell. Sir. All right, Thank you, much. Thank you, sir. Trainer, Jay Zanger. Congratulations, Head coach, Eric Orn. Coach, congratulations, buddy. Assistant coach, Kevin Meyer. Congratulations, coach. Thank you very much. Assistant coach, Randy Clampett. Congratulations, Thank you. Thank you. Assistant coach, Mark Longo. Congratulations. Thank you. Assistant coach, Lori Vogel. Coach, congratulations. Thank you. And now the Lady Raiders, number one, Ariana Rigg. Number two, Shannon Foley. Great tournament, young lady. Great tournament. Number four, Quintessa Keating. Congratulations, young lady. Number five, Alyssa Claney. Congratulations. Thank you. Number 10, Gracie Barnes. Congratulations. Thank you. Number 14, Kate Ginnenbacher. Congratulations. Number 15, Cassidy Gingenbacher. <laughs> 20, Katie Croder. Congratulations. 21, Tori Kuhn. Way to finish the tournament off, young lady. Good job. Number 22, Jordan Frerich. Congratulations. 23, Kristen Gingenbacher. Congratulations. Thank you. Number 24, J.C. Cornwell. Congratulations. 
Number 30, Bailey Gingenbacher. 31, Cassidy Foley. 44, Morgan Martin. And now will Coach Kaufman and the captains of Central Catholic High School please step forward to receive the Class 2A second place trophy presented by Mr. Woodward. Now will Coach Orn and the captains of Notre Dame High School please step forward to receive the Class 2A first place trophy presented by Mr. Jones. Following a Class 1A state soccer championship last spring, Notre Dame from Quincy brings home that 2A title in basketball here in the 2011 season. Dave Bernhardt courtside along with Patricia Babcock McGraw as we take a look back at highlights in this ball game. We've looked at second half highlights. You got to take a look and see what Quincy Notre Dame did. They got things started in a big hurry. And they got it inside, a lot of inside scoring. It was a 10 point run there by Cassie Gengenbacher. But here's Shannon Foley, she provided a spark. She sure did. She's known as Notre Dame's best defensive player. She was showing it all night. Yeah. Look Little. at the way that Notre Dame is fighting inside for positioning, going after those high percentage shots. Same thing with Jess Reinhardt for Bloomington Central Catholic. She put that team on her back tonight. Six points scored by Kate Gettenbacher on those feeds from Tori Kuhn. It was 24 points from Jess Reinhardt. So we have a state champion in Class 2A. It's Quincy Notre Dame. Patricia, your final thoughts on this one? Well, this isn't a lucky win for Notre Dame. This is a hard fought win. This is a team that pushed their minds and their bodies to the brink. They were going after those loose balls, going after those rebounds. This was a hard fought victory for Notre Dame. Congratulations to them. They really earned it. And for us here courtside, a lot of times you just hope for good championship ball games. Well, how about one with 32 minutes of intensity? It's been our pleasure down here on the court to bring you this championship. Let's go back upstairs and wrap things up with Matt Rodewald. All right, guys, we'll see you next weekend right here at uh, Doug Collins Court here at Redbird Arena. What a wonderful weekend we had here in Normal, Illinois, the campus of Illinois State University. Wrapping things up once again, West Central, the 1A state champion from this afternoon. Congratulations to those folks, and uh, they're celebrating tonight. And what a game we saw tonight here with the upset. Number two, knocking off number one, Notre Dame taking out Central Catholic and ending the streak and coming home champions uh, for the first time in 27 years. What a wonderful game that we saw tonight. Now next weekend we will see 3A and 4A girls. Can Montini come back and do it again? Can Bolingbrook do it again? Will Young finally get over the hump? We're going to find out. Super sectionals are Monday night and I will see you for the broadcast right here at Redbird Arena Friday at noon central time so you don't want to miss it. So for Lee, for Sarah, for Dave and Patricia and the entire crew here at Redbird Arena, I'm Matt Rodewald saying thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next weekend here on the IHSA Television Network. Good night everyone. from Mr. Jones. To receive the Class 1A first place trophy. Please step forward to receive the Class 2A first place trophy presented by Mr. Jones.